Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to this podcast? Before we continue my first ever journey through the Harry Potter series, just a few quick announcements first. Hello, happy new year. I hope you're well. It's been a while. I hope that you are having a good time in 2022 and I hope you're staying safe and hopefully this year can be better than the last for you. The episode that you are about to hear is from a live show that we did in Columbus, Ohio back in August of 2021. Jordan Edwards and I continued through what the heck is the plot of Harry Potter Hogwarts mystery covering years four and about the first third of year five because it's quite enormous. This live show is a blast and what's special about it is you can actually watch a video of this live show if you go to the Potterless YouTube channel. Just search for Potterless or Potterless Columbus, Ohio in YouTube and you will find it so you could also consume this wonderful Harry Potter content in video format. Ho ho! How rare! Speaking of live shows and stuff, as long as the world allows for it, we will be having some more Potterless live shows in the year 2022, starting in March. Again, this is all under the caveat that it is safe enough to do so when these dates approach, but if it is safe enough to do so, we will be having a live show in Nashville, Tennessee on March 3rd, in Atlanta, Georgia on March 4th, in Washington, D.C. on March 31st, and Seattle, Washington on April 21st, all in 2022. If you want to see the venues where these shows are and you want to get tickets to them, you can go to potterlesspodcast.com slash live. Also, you may have seen me post about this on social media, but over the course of Potterless's tenure, we donated money every single month based on the number of Patreon supporters we had at patreon.com slash Potterless. And I totaled up all the money that we gave over 2021, and now I have the final amount that we donated over the years that Potterless has existed. And in total, we gave $32,970 to charity. That is absolutely incredible. That is absolutely fantastic. I am elated that we were able to do this. That also does doesn't account for the nearly $7,000 that you all gave directly when we did charity match donation things like raffled prints and donation duels. So the fact that we were able to put so much good into the world through this podcast makes me incredibly happy. Thank you so much to all of you for making this possible. If you want to hear me podcasting on a regular basis and you're not listening to my other shows, you should listen to my other shows. I'm doing a new show called The Newest Olympian, which is a similar structure to Potterless, but I'm making my way through the Percy Jackson series. Me and a whole team put together a very fun scripted show called Modern Muckraker which pokes fun at journalistic shows by making a podcast that sounds like you're listening to a very serious program, but the questions we're answering are inherently very silly, such as, is the budget of East High School from High School Musical realistic for a public school in Albuquerque, New Mexico? You can check out those as well as everything that I'm doing on my personal website, which is just shubes, S-C-H-U-B dot E-S. Only other thing to clarify, a lot of folks have been asking me if I'm going to make episodes about the trivia house cup challenge thing that was going on or the new HBO Max 20-year reunion special special thing that just released very recently? The answer is no, I don't plan on covering these things. You can still watch them if you want to. I just don't really want to be covering the new stuff. It feels weird given JK Rowling and all her deal that's going on. But also I'm busy making lots of other shows right now. And for the foreseeable future, the episodes that will be dropped onto the Potterless feed will be from live shows. That's the plan. And there's a whole bunch of live show stuff that I want to make sure that you're able to hear. So rather than talk about re- union specials and stuff. I'd rather you experience the joy that was these Potterless live shows. And speaking of that, without further ado, let's get into this live show episode of Potterless, which seeks to answer the question, what the heck is the plot of Harry Potter Hogwarts mystery as we cover year four and a little bit of year five with a very special guest, Jordan Edwards. going folks thank you so much for coming out uh whew, i gotta start doing an intro that doesn't like completely tire me out but it's just so much fun to shoot off money guns so i'm very excited to be here i'm very excited to be in columbus ohio i've never been here before so that's very fun and new and exciting uh from what i've seen of your city which is driving to my hotel and then driving here it's a gorgeous town uh <laughs> wonderful wonderful place full of culture and everything um but no we are here today to continue a discussion that I actually had last night in the live show in pittsburgh uh, does does ohio hate other states like should i be like trying to you don't okay 
The Michigan thing, I know Ohio State University doesn't like Michigan. I didn't know if that was like just the colleges or the whole state. Okay. Oh, no. So, okay. So the whole state. Cool, cool, cool. Because I am going to Grand Rapids tomorrow. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm trying to get to do this. Great. So I'll just dunk on Grand Rapids this whole show. And then two days from now, I'll be like, oh, I was in Columbus last night. So full warning, uh, you will be dunked on in two days time. But it's okay. It's how these things work. So last night in Pittsburgh, we started talking about Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery, which is a transaction simulator uh, that pretends to be a game that you can play on your mobile device. Um, so to continue that discussion, I will be talking with someone who knows much more about Harry Potter than I do, but has never played this game before. So I get to be the expert this time, but it's a good friend of mine, someone who's been on the show a bunch, a wonderful human being from Mischief Management. It's Jordan Edwards. Welcome Jordan to the stage. <laughs> Uh, Excuse me, I, uh, I need the money. <laughs> Sorry, I had to I had to adjust my hair before you came out because I'm intimidated. <laughs> We're having a hair off this evening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This this show's getting video recorded, and I was like, uh oh, it's the hair battle. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> so a lot of thought went into that. So you have never played this. Not game. once. I don't like games, <laughs> <laughs> like at all, or just, just the kind iPhone of specific? generally. Also. I, I know that if I were to download this game and have it available on my phone at all times, I would get no work done. Okay, yeah. yeah. So it's probably for the best, and I'm sure my company appreciates the fact that I don't play this <laughs> all the time. So just by a show of hands, who here has ever played Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery? Oh. Okay, and by a show of hands, who has never played it? Okay, right, same. if you've never played it, don't worry, because <laughs> even though I've played it, I have no idea what's going on. No. <laughs> The plot is absurd. I will give you a recap of what's happened in years one through three so that when we continue from year four on, you are not confused. Don't worry. Not that much actually happens. So you're a character. And I am. you get to pick whatever your name is, etc. And then the second thing you learn in the game from Ollivander of all people is that you have an older brother that got expelled from Hogwarts for endangering the students. What a novel concept. Oh. Hogwarts actually expelling someone that endangers the students what? of Hogwarts. Whoa. Upholding the code? No. What? no. Keeping kids safe. No. So yes, his name is Jacob and he was a wizard during the first wizarding war. This game takes place a little bit back in time, like the first thing that happens is the Harry Potter Voldemort situation. We're in the 80s in this game. Yeah, yes, we are. So like Tonks is, I think, either your year or one year above you. You get to meet Bill. You get to meet Charlie Weasley, thank God. So that's the, <laughs> that's the time frame that we're in. But yes, he tampered with these fabled things called the Cursed Vaults. Cursed Child? No, Cursed Vaults. Oh. <laughs> no. And he set up series of curses upon the school and endangered the students, and then he got expelled. Uh, but then they just, like, never fixed or got rid of the Cursed Vaults, which, like, is on par for Hogwarts, where they're sure. like, ah, oh, there's this bad thing in the school. Well, I guess I'll just leave is it. Is the Chamber of Secrets <laughs> the OG Cursed Vaults? Ooh, I like it. I mean, <laughs> it kind of is. It's got a big scary door that you have to, you know, do a challenging thing to open. It's basically password protected by parcel tongue. <laughs> pretty cursed. Yeah, pretty cursed. Pretty cursed. <laughs> so basically what happens in the course of the game is like each year there's a different vault. Very conveniently, there are seven cursed vaults, I think. Huh. In the first year, it is evil ice. So it's evil ice that <laughs> like... Let it go. <laughs> let it go. <laughs> I've you, seen that movie. You joke, but for when you get to the second curse vault, which is also evil ice, but it's eviler ice. So two Frozen evil, two, two ice. Two? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. It, like one of the... Basically, the first vault just has like ice all over the floor and stuff and like students can get trapped in the ice. But the second one, there's like the vault's got like a big Elsa looking snowflake on the door <laughs> and it shoots ice beams at you and it also produces ice nights who are like knights in shining armor made out of ice. So Very, very intimidating. Yes. So that yes. is evil or ice. Got it. And then Vault 3 is like Bogarts for some reason. So you have to like fight off a bunch of Bogarts that take the shape of Voldemort because I guess you're Harry Potter too. <laughs> <laughs> so, Clearly, yes. Yeah, so that's what you got going on there. The only other things that you need to know is that you are slowly figuring out like what your brother was up to. You at one point find his notebook where he wrote a bunch of stuff. Um, you find quills that have been like transfigured from notes, like pages of the notebook into quills. So like you find quills, you do a spell, they turn back into a note uh, and then you get to learn stuff from the notes. Or pay more and get the- That's yeah. the thing. So that's why I made the joke about the, like the, the <laughs> transaction nature of the game is like it is 
designed in a way where it's like just interesting enough where you want to know what happens next, but they make you do so much unnecessary bullshit on the side that you either have to wait eight hours and like eight human hours. Real like hours. Eight <laughs> Earth hours. <laughs> like not not something and it and it doesn't even matter where like sometimes Sometimes in the game, it kind of makes sense. It would be like, talk to me tomorrow or whatever. But other times you'll have to like talk to McGonagall and she'll just be like, I'm busy. Talk to me in eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> or you can use gems, which you can buy money to do the gems. Like, yeah. So if you have patience, you can oh, make it through not. the game. <laughs> no. You can make it through the game without paying, but it's like a lot easier just to like pay. I've spent zero dollars on it, but I have spent years that I'll never get back. Uh -huh. <laughs> for, for full context, I got like, almost complete with year four of it. So as we go through year four, I will kind of know what's going on. And then at part way through the show, I'll know just as much as Jordan and we all get to learn together what is <laughs> happening. <laughs> Can't wait for all of this. So only other thing, what we know now going into year four is that one of your brother's notes said that there is a mysterious person named R, like they just go by the code letter R, R. and also, your brother said, don't let her get to them. So oh. we would think that a woman is behind all of this. But I think it's your friend, Ben. Now, Ben Copper in this game is someone who is afraid of everything. And not like, he makes Neville look like the most brave person on earth. <laughs> like, Oh, dear. Yeah, ben, ben is like afraid of, he would be afraid of wizard's chess. Like, he's afraid <laughs> of everything. It's so much so that I just don't trust him. Like, no one's, no one's that scared. Fishy how much he's afraid of everything. Yeah, right. I, th I, I am very suspicious of him. So, we go into year four now. So, you return to Hogwarts after the summer holidays. And during the welcoming ceremony, Dumbledore introduces this world-renowned curse breaker named Patricia Rakepick. Uh-oh, Rakepick starts with an R. <laughs> <laughs> so she is supposed to help with the whole cursed vault situation, and she makes it clear that no students should get involved with my investigation. And then, like, a couple levels later, she's trying to, like, hire you as her personal Wait apprentice. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what? Either you mean it or you don't. She doesn't mean it. Okay. <laughs> so after the welcoming speech, Hagrid, who you're super tight with in this game, Hagrid asks you to meet him in the courtyard where you find out that your friend Tulip wandered off into the Forbidden Forest while sleepwalking. Sure. So not ideal. Tulip? Tulip. This is Tulip Karasu. She is similar to Tonks in that she likes pranks and stuff. Okay. But Tonks in this game likes pranks. And that, like, that's it. Like, that's her whole personality. Her whole thing is like, hey, do you want to go to Zonkos? We haven't been to Zonkos in a long time. How would you feel about going to Zonkos? You want to go to Zonkos? Like, that's Tonks. her whole thing. Tulip likes pranks and stuff, but also just, like, is a human, too. Oh. And, like, has feelings. So I'm a big fan. She apparently sleepwalked and wandered into the Forbidden Forest. But it turns out that she's not the only student to do so. Apparently, someone has tampered with the fourth cursed vault, and the curse that is being laid upon Hogwarts is a sleepwalking oh, curse. Oh, there we go. Yes. So we've had mm. ice, we've had more ice, we've had boggarts, and now we have sleepwalking! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Close the fridges! <laughs> the, the ambient curse. <laughs> <laughs> so you and your friends gather in the library to discuss ways you can enter the Forbidden Forest. This is a theme in the game where when you and your friends are plotting stuff out, you decide where should we go, the one place where you're not supposed to talk. And you Obviously. meet there all the time. <laughs> all the time. Yeah. And Madam Pince yells at you, all the time. <laughs> Poor woman. <laughs> I know. I feel so bad for her. It's like, She's like I'm trying to do my job. <laughs> like, just be quiet. Just shut up. <laughs> so you go to the library, you talk this over, and you have a best friend in the game, Rowan. Rowan presents a theory to you. Rowan's basically like the Hermione stand-in. Very smart, occasionally brave. So Rowan presents this theory that Madame Breakbick is the mysterious R because Rowan, good with words. Yeah. Really? <laughs> really paying attention in language arts class. Uh -huh. So af after a little bit, you end up asking different teachers and people in the Hogwarts staff about if they know anything about Madame Breakbick to try to see if this theory has any juice. What's fun is like, 
you are as ambitious as Harry doing all of the shenanigan stuff. Yeah. But you're just like somehow turned up to 11. Whereas Harry would like hey. wait until night and like sneak around and try to do stuff by yourself. You'll Broad just, daylight. Yeah, you'll just like go into Dumbledore's office and be like, what's up with Madame Ray Pitt, Dumbledore? <laughs> <laughs> could, you, could you spell her name for me, please? Uh, yes. R-A-K-E-P-I-C-K. Uh, rake pick. Rake pick. Got it. So you learn a whole bunch as you talk to the different people at Hogwarts, but you don't really learn about who the mysterious R could be. But uh, Madame Rakepick knows that you have been snooping on her, so she asks you to meet her in the artifact room in the school. And then she advises you to ask Professor Kettleburn about entering the Forbidden Forest. Professor Kettleburn is the care of magical creatures yep. prof at the time. I don't know if he has like a canonical backstory, but at least in this game, he's just like unhinged Hagrid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Ma Where yeah. when you thought Hagrid was like, yeah, blast ended screws, those are fun. <laughs> Kettleburn would be like, blast ended screws are awesome, guys. Yeah. Like, yeah, he's very into dangerous creatures and and just having you learn Missing about them. limbs and things. Yeah? He, yeah, he has a prosthetic arm at least. Oh. I think he also has a prosthetic leg, yeah. which it feels like maybe you should rein it in a little, Not Professor a party, Kettleburn. <laughs> but he's like very happy and upbeat about it. So he's, right. he's thriving. He loves it. Perfect. So you take Madame Rick Pick's advice and you talk to Kettleburn about going into the Forbidden Forest. He's a bit hesitant to share that information with you. So to kind of curry favor with him or to have another way where you might spend money on the game, uh, you have to learn about bow truckles and you find a home uh, for the bow truckle. Oh, uh, lovely. Mm -hmm, very, very nice. Bow truckle. Mm -hmm. So you then, after doing this, he's like, yeah, I'll help you out. So you plan to meet Professor Kettleburn in the courtyard, but instead you are greeted by a mysterious figure called... <laughs> The Messenger with a capital M. Oh. <laughs> so this person hits you with a Petrificus Totalis spell after surprise meeting you what? and then just warns you, like, stay away from the Forbidden Forest and then leaves. Do you know? Can we get out of that? How did Neville I don't get out know. of that? I think it, I feel like it just like wears off over time. My I general understanding so. <laughs> is like, if you were a very good wizard, it lasts for a very long time. Uh -huh. And if you are not a very good wizard, it would take 15 minutes or so. And oh, then you just start my. moving again. Yeah. But I start don't thaw out. know. Yeah. yeah. Neville got out, so. He was Must fine. Be fine. <laughs> the other thing I wonder with the Neville thing is like, was he cold? Like just like on the floor? Like, <laughs> can they, no, like, the like, middle of winter? Does he need a blanket? Like, yeah. Can, can he blink? Like, do his eyes just dry out? <laughs> I, I don't know. I feel bad. They just, like, leave him there. And the trio's like, all right, Neville, well, see bye. you later. Like, yeah. thanks for trying to be nice and look out for our best interest, <laughs> you dweeb. Later. It's okay. He got 10 points, so it's chill. Perfect. <laughs> so, after you help out Kettleburn, he tells you that the best way to enter the Forbidden Forest is, he says that the best way is to enter, quote, unnoticed by broom, which feels like that doesn't work. Ah, no. yes, inconspicuous flight. Perfect. Like, <laughs> oh, well, what's that? Nothing. No. So the whole plot at this point is you're trying to find a way to get into the Forbidden Forest via broom. But because you're not good at Quidditch, because Quidditch isn't introduced until later in the game, you don't have a professor <laughs> you just gifting you a broom. Uh, so you have to figure it out on your own. Gotta build your own broom? Yeah. Build a broom. <laughs> oh. Coming to haunt you, you, me. Yeah, you put a heart in it. You, <laughs> yeah. like, name it. Yeah. Gosh, man. Stuff it. Oh, Build-A-Bear. Did you have, how many Build-A-Bears did you have? Uh, like two or three. I had two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had a Harry Potter one, actually. Oh, they made Harry Potter. I mean, of course, like, Warner Brothers did. <laughs> yeah. It was a bear, well, though. It was a bear? It wasn't like a Hedwig? No, it was a bear. What? It had the Harry Potter glasses and the scarf. Oh, okay. Because I made Harry Potter my personality. <laughs> <laughs> and I made it my job. <laughs> you but, win. <laughs> but, all, but all of my relatives think it's my personality. And every Christmas gift that I've gotten for the past five years has been Harry Potter themed, where I did have to issue a memorandum. I'll send you my address uh, so you can just <laughs> Okay, them on. Not, I did have to issue like a family wide memorandum to be like, I'm good. Like, really I, don't have enough I'm set. shelf space. The la well, like, the last I got the, the Hogwarts battle, like, deck building card game, which is like objectively very fun. Yeah. Um, it's like Dominion, but you're on the same team. Super cool. Right. Um, <laughs> when I got that, then I was like, all right, we're good. Like, and we're, no us. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, we're, we're all set. Unless it's socks. I always love socks. Socks are great. Yeah. So. You have to fly. You need to learn how to fly better, even though you've been taking flying classes for the past three and a half years. Fly better. Fly better. <laughs> so Madame Rakepick now arranges a secret meeting with you and some of your friends, and she wants to train you 
to take the most promising one of you as her assistant. So, as I mentioned early on, she's like, no one get involved. A couple days later, who wants to join my team? Here's the sign-up sheet. Yeah, and, and, yeah. Not, and not even like picking someone. It's like, who all is involved? I'm picking the best of you. Like, yes. very different than what you came into the mm. school year with. So you talk to Charlie, you get to meet Charlie Weasley. He's great, loves dragons, obviously, super cool. He does have like a weird ponytail though, which yeah. isn't great because Bill in the game is actually very cool. And he's got like the suave, like rolled up button down shirt with mm -hmm. like the loose mm -hmm. tie buttons, like he's looking great. Hair is all just like long and stuff. He doesn't have his cool ponytail. Charlie's got a weird little like, Rat tail gone wrong. Dumpy. Yeah. yeah, it's not great. So I'm glad Charlie's in the game, but also like, like a little <laughs> thin. <laughs> so you talk to Charlie and he is going to help you out with this endeavor to try to get a broom. You Got try it. to talk to Madam Hooch about getting you one and Madam Hooch correctly says no. Absolutely like, not. Absolutely no. not. It's a terrible <laughs> idea. So she's like, no way. So then you talk with your friends and you're like, what are we going to do? And then you decide, why don't we prank Filch and then see if he's confiscated any brooms and then try to take them. This is also the third time you've done this, where <laughs> you have to steal something from Filch, whether you know he has it or you think he might have it, and you go to Zonko's and you buy something and you mess with Filch and then you take it. So that's exactly what you do. You can use a fanged frisbee, all sorts of fun stuff. So you go and you search his office. Unfortunately, all the brooms that are in there are broken. So, womp womp. womp womp India. So you do find though another one of the quills that you can turn into a note. So you use your parfard, you turn it into a note, and this one says it threatens Madame Rakepick to stay away from the cursed vaults. So you talk to Charlie again, and you say, "All right, we got to get a broom. Who are we going to do?" You get to like pick someone whose broom you borrow. This is the part where the game is like a role-playing game because this game gotcha. does give you choices, but they're all just like flavor where nothing matters. Yeah, like it doesn't. You can choose whatever you want, and everything will be back to normal. And it goes it, where it wants to go. Yeah, like th there was even a point at one point where you do a side mission for Hagrid to like save Baby Fang from something, which is very cute and adorable. But he's such a puppy that you get to choose to name him. But uh, one of the name options is Voldemort Jr. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, which I obviously picked. <laughs> and then and then Hagrid's like, no, nah, I think I'm going to name him Fang. Voldemort, that's right? so offensive. But also incredible. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the choices like don't really matter. At best, it'll like determine what kind of uh, like stats you get in the game or like you'll have different friendship levels with some of your friends. But like ultimately, like the plot is gonna happen. It's barreling forward whether right. you like it or not. No, like yeah. it's gonna happen. So later on, you you have the broom now, you go into the Forbidden Forest and you're not really able to find anything. You go back and you talk to Tulip and you search your brother's old room. So in classic Hogwarts fashion, your brother had some like secret room that all they did was put two locks on. Uh, and that was the plot of year three. It was like, let's find the keys. Uh, yeah. And then it's just like completely left intact. Helpful for the plot. Very helpful. Yes. So you go into his room um, and what you find in there is a drawing, like a map type drawing, and it points to a grove inside the Forbidden Forest. Ah. So that's where you need to look. So you go there again looking for more clues, but you run into a centaur named Torvis. Okay. Torvis is very angry. Yeah. Uh, he does not like you because he does not like your brother because your brother apparently betrayed Torvis. Aha. Uh -huh. So what happens now? You have to duel Torvis. Uh, dueling exists in this game. It is just fancy rock, paper, scissors, where there are three different types of spells that you can do. Okay. Attack, defense, or sneaky. Scissors. No, <laughs> okay. sneaky, yeah, okay. which of course I always choose. Uh, and then if you win the rock, paper, scissors, you get to pick a spell. As you power up, you get more powerful spells, etc. The yeah. one of the spell options always is you can just throw a vial at them. So That's what I do. you just like take it and you just go like, <laughs> you just like hit him in the face. Okay. It's fantastic. Unfortunately though, not as strong as some of the other spells, sure. but it is the most fun animation. Yes. 
So you duel Torvis, and then you end up defeating Torvis, because this is how the game works. You can keep dueling him as many times as you want. Then uh, you are able to talk with Torvis. You're, uh, you reason with him now. Okay, so once you've beaten him, you're <laughs> yeah. like, sit. He's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to chat. I think it's more of like, he's like, oh, wow, you're really strong. I respect you. Uh, uh, and then yes. you, you talk to him. So basically, you learn from Torvis that Apparently, Jacob stole, like, a jeweled arrowhead from him. So you say, how about this? I'll find the arrowhead for you, and then you tell me where the next curse vault is, because you are a one-track mind character. <laughs> you care about the that's curse vaults, and that's it. that's it. You don't give a damn about anything else. You don't care about the centaur-human relations, mm -mm. the fact that there was stealing and mm -mm. sort of plundering going on. No. no, no. You There's something you want. There's something I want. Let's go. Tell me where the vaults are. We have plot to advance. <laughs> we have plot to advance. <laughs> so you meet up with Charlie, you tell him about what happened, and then you discuss the plan for finding this missing jeweled arrowhead. And you go back to Jacob's room with Tulip and your friend Penny. Penny is a Hufflepuff. She's very sweet. She has braided hair. She's very nice. Sounds She's right. Cool. Sounds She's, like Hufflepuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you end up finding another note. And I like what's very fun about when you, like, you search for stuff in Jacob's room all the time. Thankfully, you find things in plot order because this time you find a note good, saying that good, he had to good. bury the arrowhead. Uh, but it good. would have been really weird. Like the last time you search for clues with Tulip, you find a note that's like, had to bury an arrowhead? What arrowhead? This means what? nothing. Yeah. <laughs> what is this? So you find that he had to bury this arrowhead. What is the best way to find a jeweled arrowhead? A Niffler, obviously. Cute. So then you have to go to more Care of Magical Creature classes to learn about Nifflers. Of course, Madame Rakepick has a Niffler named Sickleworth, which is a pretty fun name. I like, I uh, like it. Yeah, and you have to try to convince Madame Rakepick to let you borrow Sickleworth so that you can find the missing arrowhead. Borrow her, is it her Niffler? It's her Niffler. Just like a checkout system? Yeah, yeah, I guess like, it's funny because when this part of the plot was introduced in the game, it was before the game introduced another thing to make you just try to spend as much money possible in the game, which is Care of Magical Creatures, where you can have all different sorts of pets and stuff. So if you played it like in order before that, was introduced, this made sense. Like, this is the first time you, you met a Niffler or whatever. But if you were to do this, like, right now, like, you you go to this live show, you're like, wow, this game sounds actually not bad. I'm going to invest <laughs> time and slash or money into doing it. <laughs> Great. Um, you, you will now see, though, like, you can do Caramagical Creature stuff, like, almost right from the jump. And one of the first pets that you get is a Niffler. So you do get into this weird canon thing of you're like, wow, I really wish I had a Niffler to look for stuff. I, and then you do have a uh, Niffler. But you're like, no, he, I need Sickleworth. He's I, the guy for the job. My <laughs> Niffler is worthless. Yeah. <laughs> all he does is sit, sit God, around. He doesn't like gems at all. Uh. So you have to try to convince her to let you borrow Sickleworth. You end up getting her to do it, and then you search the artifact room with Sickleworth, but doesn't find the arrowheads. Then you try to search Filch's office, of course. But Madame Rakepick offers to distract Filch so that you don't have to go to Zongo's again. She's on again. your side? Yeah, yeah. She's like, she's like, it's like, she wanted an apprentice. You seem like very cursed vault bent. <laughs> Here, so take she's my like, pet. yeah, baby. So <laughs> she brings you on, which like, I do, this is where I wish that the RPG would let you like make decisions because I still don't trust Ben more than anything. Yeah. But her name does start with R. And I don't want to be around her a lot because, like, what if we go into Filch's office? She's like, yeah, I'll distract Filch. Oh, lock the door shut. You <laughs> live here now. Like, I don't want to spend a lot of time with Madame Rakepick. I just want her to write out, I am Madame Rakepick. <laughs> <laughs> See how it rearranges you? <laughs> Where does this go? What's, <laughs> someone do that now. During yeah, during the intermission, we'll do yeah, yeah, great, uh, great, great. We'll do a thing and see if we can get anything out of it. See if we get a sick anagram. You end up searching Filch's office with the Niffler. You don't find a jeweled arrowhead, but you do find some fancy looking key. And Madame Rigpick reveals that like she's actually been looking for this as well. So I don't know if she actually wants you on the team or if this was just her being Who like, oh, are you on, ma'am? I, I don't trust yeah, her. Yeah. I don't like her. Let's not hang out with her. <laughs> um, but thankfully, you meet back up with Charlie, who's kind of like your bro in this year. Like you and him are the, the Forbidden Forest people um, because they've kind of tangentialized out. Ah, he likes dragons. Sure, he likes magical creatures. And that's Charlie in this game. Yep. 
So you make some more plans for searching the Forbidden Forest, and you end up going through, you stumble upon a strange hole and this is at the point where Mike Schubert has not played past the story. So now we're all like, we're all <laughs> learning together. We're all falling um, into the strange hole together. Yes, and this hole apparently has something, and we talked about this backstage, it has a red cap in it. Uh, I have no idea what a red cap is. Red, red caps and inky punks. <laughs> what is that from? Who said that at what it's point a, in the books? It's a, it's a magical creature that is uh, something that they were about to start learning about in book three. Oh, but, but they didn't then get plot. there. <laughs> <And> then, <laughs> because uh, they no were turning school. to page 390. Right. What is it? 293? Oh, 390. Yeah. Nice. Sir. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're just about to learn about the red caps and hinky pumps. <laughs> okay. So that's a red cap. Okay. Yeah. So it's like a, it's like if a, like a goblin was somehow angrier and greener and has like a big red, red cap. <laughs> I Google yeah. image searched it, and that's what it looked like. <laughs> there we go. There we are. So you you see the red cap, you run away. You're very scared of this red cap. So you go back into the library, talk with your friends. Because, of course, the library, the place where you're not supposed to talk, you talk in the library. And you read some books. You learn that red caps are generally repulsed by all things beautiful. So naturally, because you are playing as your character, and you're all beautiful, the red cap hates you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. So you decide to talk to Penny. Penny's really good at potions. You talk to her about brewing a beautification potion. <laughs> like you need it. No. So you meet up with Penny. You find out all the ingredients. That, of course, takes like 700 human hours oh, in God. the game. In 14 years this. later. Yeah. And oh. brewed the potion. Right, yes. When it's, you know, when four years pass, you, you make it and you brew the potion. And everything's going according to plan. But just before you are about to go into the Forbidden Forest... Who comes? Professor Snape. <laughs> Professor <laughs> Snape, of course, he can set his spidey sense tingles where he's like, the main character's <laughs> doing something. Snape. Snape. <laughs> yeah. Severus Snape. Exactly. So he comes and he he sees that you have this broom. He breaks it. Just What? Hulk? Yeah. He hulks out? Yeah, like Bo Jackson after a strikeout just breaks it over his <laughs> leg. And then what, of course, takes you over the plot of the next year is like, oh, now I got to fix this broom. So <sighs> you find out from Professor Snape Snape, though, that Madame Rakepick has been keeping eyes on you ever since she came to Hogwarts. So now you're in the weird situation of like, I don't trust Madame Rakepick. I don't trust Snape. But do I trust, is the, is the- <laughs> The enemy of my enemy is, is, my is the <laughs> suspicious person of my suspicious yeah. person, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> yeah. It's very confusing. So he says that he's gonna give that broken broom back to you, but you have to spy on Madame Rakepick. Oh, my God. <laughs> and you have to find out what she's up to because Snape also doesn't trust Madame Rakepick. All right. There's you could a have lot. not broken the broom and we right. could have still had this range. <laughs> <laughs> but then he wouldn't have been dramatic about it. So, <laughs> so then you try to spy on her and similar to how Harry is, she catches you instantly. You are not sneaky at all. You are, you're not able to learn much, but you are able to get the broom back from Snape and you can continue on trying to find the red cap. So you meet up with Charlie again. Great. Love this. Every time you go back to Charlie, it's like, good. Trust this guy. He's great. <laughs> I know canonically he cannot be the villain. Yes. <laughs> so anytime the game is like, you talk with Charlie, it's like, thank God it wasn't uh, bad. We're safe. <laughs> yeah. So you go back to the red cap's hole. You search it. Before you're able to find anything, the red cap shows up. He's very upset that you have been rummaging through his belongings because I guess he steals stuff. He's a mockingbird, I guess. Oh, yeah. I don't of know. Of course. So he's very upset with you, but you use the beautification potion and he is so repulsed by the, the new beautification look that you've given yourself that he runs away screaming. You have Madame Rakepick's Niffler. It goes on, it surges through the stuff, and it finds the jeweled arrowhead. Huzzah! <gasps> Hooray! We found it! Uh, so you go back to Torvis, your good old friend, now that you've kicked his ass in a duel. He's like, yeah. I respect you. Uh, yeah. Uh, so you, you meet up with your friends after talking with Torvis. You're like, look, Torvis, here is the arrowhead. I promised it to you. You love me now, right? Of course. He yes. gives you some information about the curse vaults because that's all you care about. You go what back- a roundabout with, way right? to get a uh -huh. tiny tidbit of information. <laughs> hey, that's the, that's the, the that's game. The game. <laughs> I'm like, wow, that was a very long thing to have oh, one conversation. God, one sentence? <laughs> so you meet up with your friends in the library and you talk about your plans to 
go to the next cursed vault and you come to the conclusion that it's most likely to be guarded by an acromantula, <laughs> big old giant spider of sorts. Yes. So you talk about these creatures with Rowan in the library. He's very book smart because he's the Hermione stand-in. And then you learn more about them to, to prep. You practice your dueling skills with Charlie. You learn a spider repelling charm from Madame Rakepick. You do all this preparation. And then you talk to Hagrid to see if he could help you out. Hagrid knows creatures, right? He knows Acromantula. Of course he does. He sure do. So you talk to Hagrid and you find out that his hut has been infested with Bundemon. I know this is a magical creature. I definitely read about it in the Fantastic Beasts book. Yes. But I read that book exactly once, Who, only it? for the podcast. Bundemon? Bundemon. Anyone know what a Bundemon is? Bundemon, yeah. Huh? Wow, all wow. right. <laughs> cool. Uh, some fans. Some you sort of are. creature. Um, <laughs> he asks if you can help him get rid of him. You help him out. Hagrid's even more of your friend than he already was. So you go to meet up with your friends in the courtyard, but shortly after you arrive, you get attacked by the mysterious dark wizard, messenger with the capital M. Oh. He again uses Petrificus Totalis on your friends, so now you have no other option but to duel him. So you are getting all ready to duel him, but Madame Rakepick shows up and oh. she knocks over the mysterious messenger and then- So they're not the same. No. Rakepick and messenger are not the same. But you know who the messenger is? Ben. Oh, <laughs> oh we knew it. Now, I'm very excited because I've been suspicious of Ben very, very early on. Do you feel so validated? I feel, yes. Yeah. Like, obviously, like, Ludo Magman didn't pan out for me, but... <laughs> I mean, it panned out for me in, like, launching lots of successful merchandise, which you can buy back there. Hey, but, anyway. uh, and you'll be able to hear this, like, eventually the Pittsburgh Live Show will be on the Potterless feed. So you'll get to hear me, like, say the sentence, I don't trust Ben, like, 17 times. So, like, I certainly did not trust him. Yeah. So it's a very big reveal. That's a good I'm, instinct I'm very, on you. I'm very yeah. happy in this yeah. moment. But Ben says, don't believe him at all. He says that he has no recollection of attacking you whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And this has been a Ben trope where there was a time where he was caught with the ice and he says he doesn't remember anything. So I don't trust it at all. So that's what he says. He's trying to play it off like he got imperious or something. I don't buy it. I don't buy it at all. I don't buy it at all. No. So you meet up with Charlie in the artifact room and you do some final prep for the curse breaking adventure. And you bring a friend along with you, you gather up and you go into the vault. And it is guarded by an acromantula, just as you thought. You can't reason with the acromantula because the acromantula just wants to eat you. So you have to fight it, but you are able to duel off a giant acromantula in the game just with your fancy rock, paper, scissors. Nice. Uh, and you're able to defeat the Acromantula. Fantastic. That's very helpful. You go to the vault. You enter the vault. And a thing that happens in this, because I guess they saw the Harry Potter movies and they were like, yeah, that sounds good. Every time you open a cursed vault, you get a vision about the next cursed vault. <laughs> like uh, Raven. <laughs> I'm having a vision. Yeah, it's pretty much it. It's like, yeah. and you get a vision about the next one. Helpful for mm -hmm. the plot. Right, of course. <laughs> so you go inside, you get this vision and it's a vision from your brother, Jacob. Apparently he is trapped in the next vault Oh, in it? It says he's trapped in the next vault. Oh, and you have to free him before it's too late. But there's also a small sweater and a portrait of a dragon inside the vault. Mm. I hope this doesn't... I, that makes me think Charlie. That would be, make oh, me very upset no. if he is involved <laughs> in a negative sense. So you exit the vault. You are then greeted by Dumbledore, much to your surprise. And <laughs> Dumbledore says that at the beginning of next year, you're going to have to serve detention in the kitchens. <laughs> next year, though. Next year. It's a holdover. Don't worry about it. Have Go, fun in the summer. Go ahead. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Whatever. I Go owe fun. you one <laughs> detention. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Dumbledore. Thanks. Thanks, bud. You you go back to your friends. You celebrate with your friends at the Three Broomsticks by just <laughs> slamming down some butter beers that you're yeah. able to find. This Get lit. Ball. Summer break. <laughs> you, go, you go back to Dumbledore and you find out from Madame Rakepick that Dumbledore had to leave urgently because it's the end of the year. And that's what Dumbledore does. Urgent that's business with the ministry. <laughs> yeah, I, I got to leave. So yeah. he's out of there. But so you can't talk to Dumbledore. And then she tells you that starting next year, she will be teaching defense against the dark arts. 
because of uh, course. And this makes a whole lot of sense because when she's first introduced in year four, it's like, oh, right. She should be the defense against the dark, the dark arts professor because you like, yeah. I don't think you ever go to Dada class in the first three years of the game. So this makes sense. Yeah. But then in year four, she's just like, brought on as like a wizard consultant of like, mm. uh, we've got these vaults going on, so we're going to bring her in. And that's like it. She's like the PE coach where she like <laughs> doesn't like do anything except for like the one thing. Yeah. Um, so that was it. But that is the end of year four. Oh, wow. wow. Very, very We made fun. it together. We did. We made it together. That was a wild ride. It was a wild ride. And this is coming up to uh, a good little timely note because we're now approaching intermission. And who's going to talk to us about intermission? Editing Mike. Hello. How's it going, everybody? <laughs> so happy to be here with you. Uh, the reason that I'm here is because Pot Tour List actually has a sponsor. And it's Woo. not just any sponsor. It's the company that Jordan works for. Hello. Hello. <laughs> So, if you know about the Leaky Cauldron, Mischief Management, they do wonderful things where they are supporting in a twofold manner. One, we're going to tell you about LeakyCon, and then two, we're going to tell you about Mischief Merch. So, first off, uh, LeakyCon is a big old unofficial Harry Potter convention that celebrates fandom and its impact. We are proudly world. unofficial. Yes, <laughs> all of the all of the good stuff you like about Harry Potter and the whole reason you like like it so much that you listen to a podcast and then you like that podcast so much that you come to a live show, like that whole stuff is LeakyCon. And it's yeah. great, and I love it, and everyone is just their happiest self when they're there. When was your first, what was your first one? I went to one of the Dallas ones. Okay. And I, like, my Leaky Con experience has always been fun, where I was, like, just there, and I think I, like, was did one or two panels, and then, or I think maybe I was just in attendance, and then I was there and did a panel, and then I was, like, a featured guest, yeah. where I got to, like, <laughs> go in the green room and, work like, your way. eat oh. eggs next to Stanislav, who <laughs> plays Victor Crumb. He ate a lot of eggs. Yeah. <laughs> He's a big guy. He's a very muscular He's a big man. Guy, yeah. yeah. But so nice. Such a yeah. nice human. Yeah. But LeakyCon is great. There is a LeakyCon coming up in July of 2022 in Orlando to celebrate Harry's birthday and only Harry's birthday. No one it's else's birthday. The only birthday. birthday we're celebrating. Yes. And then in Denver in October to kick off the Halloween season. And because you're a Potterless listener, if you go to leakycon.com to get tickets, you can get 10% off if you use the promo code Potterless. Woohoo! <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, yeah. But you're thinking right now, uh, July, that's a million years from now. I want something right now. Well, you can, and it's merch. They have a whole bunch of mischief merch that is a bunch of fun stuff. Yep. Uh, all sorts of in-joke references to Harry Potter things yes. and beyond. It's deep dive, deep cut Harry Potter <laughs> references. My favorite one is that we, on a whim, made a Grunnings drill like trucker hat. <laughs> <laughs> It sold so many. <laughs> so that's my favorite design we've done. We have a bunch of other stuff. Uh, we're constantly putting up new stuff as we sit in meetings and think of stupid shit to put on t-shirts. <laughs> so if you want to get that merch, you can go to mischiefmerch.com. And again, if you use the promo code Powderless, you'll get 10% off. Only other thing is at the end of the show, I always like to do a fun Q&A thing. So if you want to send any sort of question for Jordan and I to answer, you can just send an email to potterlesspodcast at gmail.com and just make the subject something about Columbus and ask any sort of question. It can be about Harry Potter. It can be about this game. It can just be like, what did you eat for breakfast today? And was it good? Um, and my answer will be a bag of baby carrots. Uh, so... Uh -huh. Because I was been, it good. It, it was fine. Oh, Very okay. easy to eat <laughs> while driving from oh, Pittsburgh see, yes. to Columbus. Drive so those are the things you can do during intermission. We will see you back in like 10 to 15 minutes to talk about year five of Harry Potter Hogwarts mystery. <laughs> see you soon. Whoa, past live editing, Mike. It's me, present recorded editing mic. How's it going, everyone? Before we get back to the rest of this episode of Potterless, just want to take a little break. You will hear some ads for sponsors that make it feasible for me to be a full-time podcaster. Some of the ads will be read by me. Others of them won't. The ones that are not read by me are inserted locally. So if you attend Bo Batten School, don't be surprised if you hear a French ad. But once those ad reads are over, we'll get back to this episode of Potterless. All right. Hello. I hope everyone had a lovely intermission. Let's continue talking about Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery, and then we'll get into Q&A. Reminder, if you want to do questions, potterlesspodcast at gmail.com. Make the subject line something about Columbus uh, or about how much you don't like Michigan. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> okay, um, so for year five, I do want to give a shout out to this website, bluemoongame.com, who has put together the lovely recaps of this because I've not played a lick of year five of this, <laughs> this game. This is Sparknotes, so, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, this is uh, <laughs> this is basically me just reading their cool little recaps of it, and we're all going to learn together what happens in Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery Year 5. First uh, of all, we go to detention. Yes, that, I mean, <laughs> we, we know should. This. But we ha- what you will know, and you'll s- like if you've played the game in the past, is that usually at the end of the year, Dumbledore gives you some sort of some sort of threat of like, you can't do this again, or I'm going to take away points, or I'm not giving you any points anymore. Like when he gives vague, like, oh yeah, you did some cool stuff, 100 points. But then he <laughs> keeps doing it. So let's find out if he's actually a man of his word mm. or not. So, <clears throat> you catch up with your friends and you discuss the events of the previous year. Penny introduces you to her little sister, Beatrice. Ah, she's very excited to meet you. Ah, Ginny? Uh, <laughs> is this your Ginny? So, you attend your first defense against the dark arts class under the tutelage of Professor Rigpick. You then get, in- <laughs> you get introduced to Percy Weasley. <laughs> oh, hey. Oh, a highly ambitious younger brother of Bill and Charlie. That's a generous description of yeah. Percy Weasley. Bless. You get handpicked by Professor Rigpick along with Bill and Marula. Marula is basically your Draco. She just oh, is yeah. very angry at you all the time. And like anytime she sees Arch you. Arch nemesis, enemy, mm-hmm. frenemy. Always brings up like how Draco is always like, you're poor to Ron. She's always like, your brother's missing and maybe dead. Like all the time. Nice. Absolutely. Absolutely no chill. Yeah. Marula is... <gasps> well, with a name like Marula. Marula, yeah. Her, yeah. her full legal name is Marula Snide. Like, <laughs> villain villainy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, apparently, Bill, you, and Marula get handpicked by Professor Rakepick to serve as her assistants with finding and breaking the cursed vaults. You then go to the courtyard and you meet Ben to discuss the events of the previous year where he was, I don't know, an evil person? And then, Ben, oh, what's up, dude? But uh oh, it says that you're meeting up with Ben and then you get attacked by the Dark Wizard, capital D, capital W. So I guess it's someone else. I think it's Ben. It's definitely <laughs> still Ben. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's got not very subtle, this one. No, it's got to be Ben. It's for sure Ben. Um, but apparently someone else got controlled by whoever is pulling the strings, and it's up to you to discover who it is. That's at least what Ben is saying. Ben is saying that someone else has possessed this other person, which is what that person did what to Ben. Ben would it's, say. It is what Ben would say. <laughs> Classic Ben. So you meet up with Bill and Rule at the Three Broom Six to discuss... Uh, what has been happening, and after you talk for a while, Penny f- shows up and informs you that her little sister is missing. We just met her! Uh, so you offer to help immediately, and then you go to search for her in the Forbidden Forest alongside one of your friends you get to pick. You don't end up finding Beatrice. She's not in the forest, but later on, you find Penny in a classroom brewing a special potion that could help locate Beatrice. How? I don't know. I don't but, know what potion this would be. You pour it on the ground and it like <laughs> slithers toward her. <laughs> or it like spells out. Like, it's like she's in. Yeah, it's like Google Maps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just, oh, it just, it pours out just like the circle with the triangle in it. But, and then you just hit. Yeah, perfect. Very I, fun. I, I like this. I support it. Move along. But uh-oh, it doesn't work. And then. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. It's a terrible way to find someone. <laughs> All right. Okay. But Betty gets very frustrated. But Marula arrives with good news. She found Beatrice in the grand staircase. How do you find someone? In, was She's she in, embedded in the wall? <laughs> like, was she inside? I don't know. It's like, oh, we couldn't find her. She was on the stairs. Part of the like, crew. Part of the ship. Part of the crew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what what was that? That's Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, wrong fandom. Okay, okay, wrong okay. fandom. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I sorry, sorry. apologize. That's very good. That's very good. <laughs> the only thing I know from that is like, you're in one. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, the Grand Staircase is like, it feels like a very, oh, okay. I should have read the next clause. Comma, trapped in one of the portraits. Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, Reading <Reading-ing>. comprehension, <laughs> me. <laughs> the worst subject on my SATs. Yeah. So, Madame She's Rake, in a portrait. She's in a portrait. Okay. Madame Rakepick tells you that this is most likely caused by another curse. Ah, so I guess year five is everyone gets trapped in paintings mm, instead classic. of sleepwalking. Yes. 
So apparently someone is meddling with another curse vault and unleashed this disaster upon Hogwarts. The only way to save her and everybody else is to find the next vault, break its curse. So you gotta do it. So you go to a history of magic lesson under the, oh, you get to meet Professor Bins. Bins. That's very fun. I'm so mad that they cut Bins from the movie because he was honestly one of my favorites. Like this suit dry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Puts the audience to sleep. I wonder why they cut it. Has any... <laughs> Has anyone played year five of Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery? Okay, how, how is Bins? Is he fun? No. no? <laughs> oh, I'm shocked. Like, I'm not, so shocked. not even like so boring that it's funny. He's just like there. I just think that they're really funny. Oh, <laughs> man. Yep. Damn, he's not even like good at being excessively boring. Oh, that's he's in the bad. uncanny valley of boring. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Where he's just like regular boring. Yeah. Okay, well, you meet Bins. Wow. Uh, and then later on, oh, you do serve your detention where you meet Pitts a house elf in charge. This is not a canonical person, right? Pitts, no. No, okay. Hmm. I guess they ended up naming a town in Pennsylvania after him, though. <laughs> um, so while you are there, you meet and befriend a fifth-year Gryffindor named Jay Kim. Ah, that's cool. There's another Asian student at Hogwarts. Yay! Hey! <laughs> <laughs> and Jay is actually a name. Yay! Jay and Kim are both names. That's a name you could actually have. That's I like good. that. Yeah, I'm glad his name wasn't. <laughs> oh, we won't go there. <laughs> we know what you mean, but we won't go there. Oh, okay. <laughs> Win Suzuki. Anyway, uh, <laughs> he <laughs> he likes to smuggle all sorts of banned items into Hogwarts, which is the reason for him being in detention most of the time. Okay. You now have three friends whose whole thing is like getting into trouble. <laughs> so you tell him the situation about Penny's sister and he immediately offers to help. Cool. The two of you go to the library where you meet some of your other friends to research and talk about- and Talk the loudly. <laughs> talk loudly. Madam, Come on, Madam, read the books first. Talk about them second. <laughs> Madam Pence is like, I quit. I'm surprised that she has not left the school already. So you then you talk to Professor Flitwick and you find out that it is best for you to talk to nearly headless Nick and seek oh. out his advice. Okay. We love Nick, Nick. Nick tells you that you should consult the resident portrait painter, a fifth year, wait, a fifth year Ravenclaw student named Badia Ali. Yay, representation. Why is a student the official portrait? She's 15! <laughs> Do they pay them? I of obvious of course. Hogwarts? I don't think they even pay the teachers. No, yeah. They probably pay the teachers in exposure. They're like, this will be really great for your brand. Yeah, your portfolio <laughs> piece. Yeah. This will be a really good opportunity for you. <laughs> God, that sucks. What well, okay, I mean, I don't know a lot about the portrait painting world. I assumed it was like like graduate students at least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, We're putting uh, these fifth years to work. A fifth, yeah, I mean, I hope she's getting something out of this. Yeah. So you meet Badia. Um, apparently she's very gifted when it comes to art. Well, I'd hope so. Yeah. Uh, she's not just making like finger painting like, <laughs> yeah, it's Phineas Nigelis. Yeah. yeah. So uh, she's apparently one of the most gifted students at Hogwarts. She has a knack for art, which you notice during your first meeting, and she gives you an important piece of advice. Sometimes, if you do things in the opposite way, you can get quite an interesting result. Sure. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that could also be really bad if you were, yeah. like, trying like to... Like doing art. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I went towards like trying to, you know, jump your car battery. <laughs> I was like, that, uh, that could be not ideal, yeah. right? Yeah, doing things in reverse. Well, hmm. well, she did just say interesting results. Yeah, so. not necessarily successful. Yeah, so uh, so after this, you are able to leave detention early. You convince Marula to help you and you get Filch to tell you the information related to the Marauders map. Whoa, that was so, a, hold on. How did you leave detention early? That's great. How did you get the evil person to help you? That's great. You got to give you information about the Marauders map, the piece of paper he hates most in the world? <laughs> Just do things in reverse. Oh, Obviously. you get interesting results. D detention, you just walk out instead uh, of in. That's pretty good. Yeah. Oh, but Peeves apparently is an important character now. Peeves previously in the game, you need energy. Energy is the way that you like do all the tasks. And one of the ways you can get energy is spending money. But another way you can like go in Hogwarts and just like tap stuff. 
So you can tap like an, a painting of an empty bowl and like oranges come oh, down yes. and then you get an energy. Or yeah. you tap like a painting of a random girl and she giggles and runs away and then you get yeah. an energy. But one of the things is you can tap Peeves. He's just like floating around yeah. in his jester outfit and he just like laughs and flies off. So now he's actually important into the game. I like that. Yay, Peeves. So Peeves isn't as cooperative because he's Peeves. And you then have to seek out Professor Snape and talk to him about it. I don't know if that's the person like, oh, I'm really having I'm really having problems with the fun loving peeves. Who am I gonna talk to? <laughs> Professor Snape. Yeah, it's classically seem... helpful. <laughs> yes, traditionally loves to help protagonists Snape. <laughs> so apparently, though, at the sheer mention of the Marauders map, it makes him very upset. Can't imagine why. And uh <laughs> And he refuses to discuss the subject, but he does reveal that Penny is on a road to self-destruction and it is only a matter of time before she gets consumed by grief. It's up to you to stop her from doing that before it's too late. That is so unprofessional. I mean, that that's wild. How would he know this? I'm, I will say I'm not like too shocked because there are like some other instances where Penny like has a really tragic backstory that you only learn about in like very short uh, bursts. Yeah. And then also like because the game has quests and side quests and they don't always line up chronologically. Yeah. Sometimes you can be doing two things at the same time. So one of the times I was playing the game, Penny's telling you like she has a friend who I think was was her age and then like tragically lost their lives like really early oh, and it's like this traumatic thing and she was like going to brew a forgetfulness potion so that she doesn't remember this and then you have to talk her out of it. But at the same time as I was doing that, I was also learning about Quidditch and she's like, Quidditch is really fun, Mike. You should have a great time. <laughs> so you go from like do learning how to make face paint to go into the stands of a game. Yeah. And then right after that, she's like, I think I want to brew a forgetfulness potion so I forget my, my, yeah, it's my like, dead friend. Like Penny, we were just making face paint and now we're making like e eternal sunshine of the spotless <laughs> mind juice. Like, oh, Penny. <laughs> Penny. So Penny I'm not means, too surprised, yeah. but like how did Snape find out? Yeah. So you see Penny next to her sister's portrait. She's feeling devastated about everything that's happened. You want to help her. You talk to her for a while and you tell her that there's a potion that could be useful for her situation. You then go to several different places getting various ingredients and you make that potion. And in the end, she successfully manages to brew it and you're able to choose whether she should drink it or not. Uh, the recap does not tell me what happens, but it's the game, so it doesn't matter. So she tells you that she knows of someone that might be able to help you with the cursed vaults. So you talk to all the house ghosts of Hogwarts in hope of finding out where the Marauder's map is. Feels like an interesting group of folks to discuss <laughs> yeah, about this. They're like, we don't know what you're talking about. It's <laughs> <laughs> not our plot line. This is, yeah, this is not okay. relevant to us. So you learn that Jacob had a friend called Duncan Ash, A S. <laughs> H E. <laughs> yeah. well, my first thought was like Arthur Ashe's sibling, the tennis legend. Um, but apparently, oh no, Duncan died in his pursuit of the cursed vaults and became oh, a ghost. Lord. You feel words. bad for laughing at Duncan's last yeah. name, kind of sounding like, but don't you? <laughs> <laughs> So you find him in the prefect's bathroom. No, not this bathroom. That's the good one. Come on. Oh, yeah. and why? Buzzkill. That's not, yeah, like, oh, like, let me bubble bath, bubble bath, bubble bath. I died finding cursed vaults. Uh, oh, blue, blue, blue. So, hmm. So you find him and you discover that he is infuriated even by mentioning Jacob's name, which seems like a common theme. Yes. He pretty much refuses to tell you what happened, so you have to figure out a way, <laughs> you have to find a why, you have to find out why he hates your brother so much. So you investigate the life and death of Duncan Ash, which sounds like a boring book I don't want to read. Um, you learn that he and Jacob were pretty close, and then he died during the pursuit uh, of the cursed vaults, which feels like what you already knew. From the last book, <laughs> the last chapter. Yeah, you're right, yeah. yeah. So you find out that Jacob lied and got himself expelled in order to protect those he cared about. Classic Spider-Man. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So he, let's see, Duncan then reveals that in order to find the next fault, you need to seek out Mundungus Fletcher in Nocturne Alley. They are oh. just checking off every Pew, side character. Pew. Who's someone from the movies that exists? You gotta My, talk to them, baby. Mundungus. <laughs> So, uh, but apparently moving on, you talk to Jay and Jay says, you ask Jay if he can provide you with some information about Mundungus Fletcher. And afterwards, you then go to Defense Against the Dark Arts. You fight off a Bogart. And then once it's over, Madame Rakepick puts you through a series of tests in order to have you prepared for the trip to Nocturnali where Mundungus is. Thankfully, you managed to pass all of her tests and you're ready for another adventure. Now, you you may have been noticing with the way I'm describing these, it seems like, wow, it seems like before you do 
anything. You talk to a teacher and then that teacher makes you like read a bunch of stuff or go to a bunch of classes yeah. or whatever. That is because this game, especially in year five, was really trying to stretch the plot. Yeah. In in all of the different years, there's different there's a certain set of chapters. And the the chapters in the first couple of years, it's like the first year is like 10, then it's 11, then it's 13, then I think year four is 16. Year five is 35 chapters. Whoa. So I guess when they were making the plot... They're like, oh, it was a bad idea to make this plot run out in seven years. (laughs) We got to keep this going. Right. So they really stretched this out because they were like making good money off of this game that like people hate to love to spend money on. Yeah. So yeah, really stretch out. Safe to say, we are not going to finish our year five discussion because we want to do a QA and a because that'll be super fun. But yeah. we proceed forward. Onward. We got to learn. What chapter to- are we on now? Uh, oh, I don't know. I lost count. <laughs> let's like, let's like see. Eight or nine. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. This is like chapter 10. Okay. So we would have been done one with third. other years. But one. now we're preparing to go to the scary alley. Yes. Ugh. If you put the words together, it sounds like nocturnally, which is night. Uh, Nocturnally. Have you been to the Nocturnally at the theme park, though? Yeah, it's super cool. That one's awesome. That's it's great. Air conditioned. Yeah, super fun. That's like highlight yeah. of it. it. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah, I like that nocturnality. Like, there's always the parts in the theme parks or the malls where like the dads are like, "This is my favorite part of the park." Yep. Because it's like the cool air conditioned park. Like yeah. in Disney, the best place, and this makes sense because I have grown up to love it. Is uh, I think they're they might be getting rid of it, which makes me very sad. But in Disney, it's in Epcot, the cool zone. Oh, it's coming back. By, it's, it's coming back. back. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. The cool zone brought to you by Coca Cola who's not paying cool. me to tell you this. Yeah. <laughs> they have a area in Epcot with a bunch of fake ice and fake snow and fog machines. And it's just like a room that is heavily air conditioned yep. with a lot of soda fountain machines yep. that just has sodas from around the world. Great. And some are really cool. There's like a watermelon one. Yeah. There's like papaya. a bunch of, Yeah, papaya yeah. one. There's like, a, like the gold soda from, I think, Peru, maybe? Mm. Like, there's a bunch of really cool ones. And then there's three that just taste like, I'm pretty sure they're butt flavored. Yep. Um, <laughs> And they're very, very bad. Yeah. Uh, but you get to have the fun thing of like trying them all out. It's very fun. As a kid, forcing your your new friend to try the horrible ones <laughs> and filming them. Yeah. It's very fun. Like as a kid, you're like, oh, cool soda. And as a new adult, you're like, I can sit down. And so there's cool air in here. This is fantastic. What a <laughs> what a cool zone. So that that's not That's, that's not where we're going. Yeah. And I just think it's funny that dads would like the spooky place because it's yeah. covered and indoors and air conditioning. Very, very fun. So, Nocturnally, you got to go. You pass all your tests. Great. You're ready to go. You've learned a bunch of things. Uh, you use the flu network to go there, but it transports... Food network? The Sorry. Flu- the what? <laughs> Ina Garten? The- <laughs> We're watching the food network? The food network, yes. Oh, um, no, wrong. Yeah. You have, to meet up wrong with, you, you have to meet up with Ina Garten to get a bunch of ingredients <laughs> yeah. to make a potion. The food network. And she's like, she's like, oh, if you can't, if you don't grow the, the souls <laughs> of undead goats in your backyard, store-bought is fine. <laughs> Flu network, right. The flu network. Got it. So it transports you and a friend to Diagon Alley. It's close enough to your destination. You go to Nocturne Alley. You ask for Mundungus Fletcher, but you can't find him. So you go to Ollivander's and then Flourish and Blots. And then Just you- Just knocking on doors. Yeah. Hello. Has anyone seen this guy? <laughs> Mundungus. <laughs> this random person that oh, apparently this everyone is from knows. Mundungus. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's got to know. So you then go to Nocturne Alley again. You get attacked by dark wizards and witches. Of course. Madam Rigpick arrives. She really has a knack for this. Where yeah. when you get attacked, she's like, oh, no, no, no. Um, and then she saves you. And then she tells you that Mendungus is tied up at the three broomsticks. Okay. Tied up, you yeah. say. <laughs> <laughs> so you meet Mendungus in the three broomsticks. You question him about the Marauder's map. And you learn that he was attacked by someone who apparently stole it from him. Why does Mundungus have it in the first place? This goes against canon in a lot of ways. <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> so he then asks, of course, he like blackmails you. Uh, he makes you get hard to find items uh, for him to tell you the whole story. So you do it, you gather the items, you bring it to him, and then you go with Madame Rakepick and Marula, you talk to him, and then he reveals that the person who attacked him and stole the map somehow transformed into something before he ran off. So I guess some sort of animagus uh, of sorts. Yeah. Um, but then according to him, the attacker returned the map to Hogwarts, which seems like a strange thing. To for... put it back into the canon timeline. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the sacred timeline. Yeah, I have just been watching Loki. Yeah. And I guess like the yeah. TVA was like, oh no, yeah. we got to go next Hogwarts. This event got pruned, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. No spoilers though. I'm on the second to last episode. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. 
So uh, you talk to Madame Rakepick and she advises you to look for a portrait of the cursed vault. That's very convenient. You painted a portrait of it? <laughs> yeah, maybe. The fifth year student did? Uh, let's find out. Yeah. So you and Badia go to the grand staircase to look for it. Okay, I guess she didn't paint it, but you can't find it. Afterwards, you go to the library to meet with your friends and, and talk chat about loudly. <laughs> um, you don't find out anything helpful. So you and Jay go to see if any of the house elves know anything. Luckily, one of them tells you that a few years ago, a Gryffindor student asked the same question question. And that Gryffindor student was... I, uh, uh. Bill Weasley? I don't know. Um, you then go to the Gryffindor common room searching for clues, or, or maybe maybe it was your brother, but no, your brother, I think, is just in whatever house you're in. Um, oh, right. So, I don't know. So, you go to the Gryffindor common room searching for clues. You're unable to find anything, but to make matters worse, Percy, uh-oh, the narc that he is, arrives and threatens to report you for using magic outside of class. Are you not, wait, you can't even use magic, like, in the school? It's only inside the classrooms? I guess. I guess if you're Percy, well, I mean, there's tickler here with the I, rules. He's a first year. Like, why, can't you just like shove him in a he's locker? It's been awful forever. <laughs> it's been awful forever. <laughs> so in the end, you manage to convince him not to do so. And then in exchange, you will look for his missing rat, Scabbers. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really anti-Scabbers yeah. crowd here tonight. How do you know who this rat is? <laughs> Never met this rat before in the 80s. Yeah. So you and Jay go to search for Scabbers. You look in a bunch of different places until you eventually find that he might be in the cursed corridor. So you search there. You find him near the entrance of the cursed vault, but you also find something entirely... You gotta find a new adjective. <laughs> cursed, 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 child, cursed, 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 corridor, cursed vault. <laughs> you are all... You also find something entirely unexpected, an odd-looking piece of paper. But that's all the description says. Um, <laughs> yep. You return Fang to Hagrid after taking him on an adventure to retrieve Scabbers. And uh, then you bring Scabbers back to Percy. You meet up with Ben and you discuss another one of his fears because Ben is afraid of everything. Mm. He's behind it all. Um, <laughs> it was Ben all along. <laughs> he tells you that he suspects Scabbers as being the one responsible for his memory losses. Uh, and afterwards, you go up to meet with Madame Rakepick. You tell her about your search. You show her the old piece of parchment that you found, this strange piece of paper, and it turns out this is the very item that you were after the entire time. Oh, it was the Marauder's Map. Oh, well. Oh, well, that we was go. cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Uh, so we did Madame, it. We, Madame Rickbeck explains the use of the Marauder's Map. She says how it works, and then she tells you how important it is to keep it from falling how into the wrong hands. How does she know? Good question. Good question, person from the audience. <laughs> how does she know? She's actually Remus Lupin. <laughs> <laughs> So she says it's very important to keep it from falling into the wrong hands. Because of that, she takes it away from you for safekeeping. Sure, Madam Rakepick. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But not before you manage to catch a glimpse of Fletcher's attacker. Who's Fletcher? Have we met Fletcher? Oh, oh Dungus yeah. Fletcher. Yeah, Got yeah. it. Cool. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I yeah. Huzzah! Smart crowd! Yeah. Uh, really no one up. knew what a Bundyman was, but they yeah. definitely knew <laughs> Mundungus's Dungus last name. Yes. I just always call him by his first name, and I, I just thought it was someone whose first name is Fletcher, because yeah. that is a first name. It is. So, okay. Uh, you get you, you manage to catch a glimpse of Mundungus Fletcher's attacker. You then go Got to it. several places where the attacker visited, because you have to stretch out the plot of this game. You find some clues, and you find out a clue that Rakepick was working with Jacob all along. Oh. Huh? but you're uncertain if any of it's true or not, so you have to confront her and see if she'll be willing to tell you everything. Well, she's not gonna tell you if, she, like, she'll just lie. Yes. Would you explain your evil plot to me, please? No. Madam Rakepick, have you <laughs> been lying to me this whole time? Ugh, oh, you got me. Well, <laughs> guess so. You do some preparation and practice in order to face Madam Rakepick and ask about Jacob. Once you do, she, uh-oh, once you do, she shatters your wand in order to teach you a lesson. That'll show you from asking me questions about your own brother. <laughs> now it's impossible for you to complete your schoolwork. Like, she's sentenced you to failure here. No, no, no. You are provided with a temporary wand. Why was this not given to Ron? Uh, yeah. Uh, you, <laughs> you are provided. There's only one. <laughs> we the one, the one temporary wand. wand. You are provided loan. with a temporary wand until you can get a proper replacement. You visit Ollivander's. Uh, oh my God. Okay. There's. We're not going to finish your five. I got to find a good stopping point, a good button, as we say in the old improv uh, area. 
So, Good luck. This is off the rails completely. <laughs> yeah, yeah completely. your wand just got blasted to smithereens. Yeah. You visit all the vendors where you get a new wand, which will hopefully serve you well on your future adventures. You also find out that Mundungus Fletcher wasn't telling you the whole truth because what? he's Mundungus Fletcher. A liar. Um, <laughs> But that's all you learn about it. You go to the Hogshead. You meet Aberforth. We're really meeting everybody that has check. a name. Check, check. check. Like, who is left at this Cameo. point? Cameo. Oh, wow. Uh, you then go to see Professor Dumbledore, and he reveals to you that you are a legilimens. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. This will allow you to read other people's minds. I legit thought you were going to say he reveals to you that you're a secret Dumbledore. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! That's what the third movie's gonna be about. Yeah. Um, this will allow you to read other people's minds, but in order to do so, you will need to practice a lot. Yep. Thankfully, I hear you saying how, thankfully, Professor Snape is willing to teach you how to control this ability. <laughs> and hopefully with his guidance, you'll be able to master it. And all I'm gonna say, and this is a great little note to end on before we go to the Q&A, Snape, against all odds, does teach you how to use the legilimency. Yeah. That's why when Harry's doing it, Snape is so put out because he's like, I've already done this. Uh, <laughs> I did this in the 80s. I'm so bored. Oh, that wow. That explains that plot hole. Okay, cool. So that is as far as we got into Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery uh, years four and five. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. What a journey that we, was. What, what, a, what a magical journey we've all been on. Thank yes. you all. This has been a learning experience. Yeah. Uh, but now we're going to get on to Q&A because it's very fun. Um, so we've got some stuff here. People have sent it in. So let's see what's going on. This first question comes from Brittany. Brittany says, Mike, if you went on a courtyard date or a date to Hagrid's Garden, these are dates that you can do in Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery. Uh, yes. You can like go to a date in Hagrid's Garden where there's giant pumpkins uh, or go on, go in the courtyard where you like watch the star and you slowly like, what if we touched hands? Yeah, what do you do on a Hogwarts <laughs> mystery date? You just like, in Hogwarts mystery, you just do, whenever you do things like when you play with gobstones with your friends or like going to meal, you just like, answer quiz questions. You just tap it romantically. Well, no, they, they like, they give you, <laughs> they give you like questions and then you have to get them right. And when you do a game like Obstones, you have to like do questions that kind of like play to what the the person you're playing against, what they're interested in. Uh, when you do meals, you have to like answer questions about your friend that like grill you. Like, what's my father's maiden name? Um, it's like uh, all the questions <laughs> they ask you when you forget your password. Like, what's the street you grew up on in childhood? This sounds like, very fishy, if you <laughs> know what yeah, I mean. it's wild. Yeah. Um, but then for the date, they just kind of like ask you questions and it's normal date questions. Like, what's your ideal, like, you know, the classic, like, would you rather like go to the mountains or the ocean? Mm. But then, like you get a, a score based on how good the answer was. So you have to like oh. predict what the other person would like, even oh though you're answering questions about yourself. yourself? <laughs> it's not good. And That's then the date can not like not go well, even if you answered every question honestly. Yeah. So it really doesn't teach, like if children are playing this game, it doesn't teach a good lesson. Don't be yourself. Right, don't be answer yourself. Answer the questions say how you want they them want to answer. You to say. <laughs> so anyway. It's um, like the plot of The Little Mermaid. So, <laughs> sorry, sorry, wrong That's fandom. Great. It's great. No, it's good. It's all, all fandoms are welcome. Um, so <laughs> if you want to uncourt your date, uh, who do you usually pick and why? Um, or do you change it up? So in the game, you get a list of like people that you can take on a date with. You can't pick Ben because he's definitely the villain. Yeah. You can't pick Tulip, who would be my pick on the dates. I don't know why you can't pick Tulip. I don't know if it's revealed that she's also a villain, but she's just like not written into the game. So huh. I usually just like, take Penny because yeah. she's cool, cool and nice. Of all these people that you've just learned about, who would you take on a date? I want to figure out this fifth year art student. Yeah, I think. <laughs> How are you so good? I think you can. I think she is one of the students well, that you can take on a date. That's definitely my pick. So yeah. And why go. is she painting the vault? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, the, the vault was already painted. That wasn't her. Oh, she's got painting it. something else. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. Yes, she would absolutely be my pick. So thank you for your question. Okay, Sam... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sam, the, the subject of this one was Columbus, comma, urgent in all caps. So I, I did open it. And this urgent question is, did you bring those red leather chairs or does the venue have them? 
He carts them around. The venue did have them. <laughs> I'm not a very complicated boy. Like the tour is interesting for me because my tour manager like sent me an email where he was like, what's your rider? And I was yeah. like, oh, right. I get to do one of Full those. Full green m and so, so then I just, yeah, I, I like stressed out because this is like the certain situation I don't want to get in where it's like, well, I have to ask for like the bare minimum of things I need, but I also don't want to sound too pushy. So I just end every sentence with no worries if not, um, which is like big energy. <laughs> yeah. So basically, my writer was like, I would like to eat something before the show. I would like to drink a beverage after the show. And as far as like tech requirements, if there are chairs and microphones and a small end table, I would like I'm those. Good. I would like those, uh, please. Yeah, which yeah. is very fun when I perform at places like more catered toward music because the venue I did in New York is like, it's like most mostly music bands. So they send me this like really long email about like all the tech requirements and stuff. And they're like, we have this drum set and these monitors and these plugins and all this stuff. They're like, what do you need? And I'm like, two microphones. <laughs> Got and it. And if they make noise, great. But then even from that, I could be like, no worries if not, I could just yell. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> I can project. So, so yes, I did not bring the chairs. They're nice. Though. They're comfy. Uh, they are, they're nice. I like it. Thank you so much. Sure. Uh, thank yeah. you, Woodlands Tavern, for such nice chairs and this nice end table. But yes, thank you for this question. I'm now opening this one, which is called Columbus Rocks, Michigan, with an asterisk over the M. Oh, yeah. Uh, sucks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love this. Okay. Sarah asks, um, oh, and thank you. So Sarah clarifies that she is a Slytherin, but not racist. If anyone has ever- I appreciate if that. If anyone's ever been to a Potter's That's Live show good. or listened to one, you know that usually when the world is not, you know, the world and we pass along a microphone and stuff, people say their name, own a house they're from. And yeah. the only rule is if you are from Slytherin, you have to clarify if you're racist or not. And if you right. are racist, I just won't field your question. I'm right. very sorry. I gotta draw the line somewhere. Yeah. So Sarah is a Slytherin at heart and not racist. Says, if you could change one thing about the Harry Potter universe and books and make it canonically correct, what would it be and why? Hmm. I don't know if you have a, an answer right off the top, but... To make it canonically correct. Yeah, like something to change and make it canonically correct. Um, no, because then... <laughs> that would be fun, but then I wouldn't get to set all this great merch, which you can buy in the back or at potterlessfagas.com if you're listening to this in the podcast feed after the fact. Oh, I, what I would change is just the thing that really makes me upset because it like doesn't make any sense and it's also just bad and it's wrong. It's like when Ron bullshit parcel tongues the door open uh, yeah. in book seven, yeah. like it doesn't make sense and it ultimately does not matter plot wise. Like Harry could have just gone down. Harry yeah. could have just talked to the door and then left. Like there's so many other ways around it. It's yeah. so ridiculous. So that just because like it's an unnecessary detour that does nothing. That or either the fiend fire thing, which is the same kind of thing where it's like it doesn't make sense and Hermione doesn't bring it up. It's absolutely ridiculous. And then ultimately it doesn't matter. Like I would just change those things. Those things because like why? Yeah, I would want to keep Dobby alive somehow. Oh, I don't know yeah. how, or I mean, I understand the, the the function of him dying, but it made me real mm -hmm. sad. No, so yeah. that's not a great answer, but it's the one you're gonna get. No, it's good. We all love a Dobby. It's a good redemption arc. Yeah. So Dustin asks this next question: says, "Do you think that Harry could have gotten out of his trial in the Order of the Phoenix if he just said, yeah, I did magic in front of my cousin who knows I'm a wizard?' Or could that have been <laughs> the defense? I mean, it's valid. The problem is." you are making this defense to fudge. There's yeah. so many other things like- There's a lot of politics in play like the, here. The whole trial, couldn't they have just like given Veritaserum to Harry like at any point in time right. when they thought he was lying about no. Voldemort? So like, the, I don't know that fudge the, would The point of the it. trial was not actually to, because of the magic. It was because Harry Potter was Harry Potter and they, you know, right. fudge had politics to deal with. Classic, classic, classic. Yeah. Man. Um, <laughs> this question comes from Lindsay. What's Kelly doing tonight? Um, <laughs> let's see. That's a good see. question. Uh, it is, it's a Monday evening. Oh, she's currently in the midst of a marathon of the new Gossip Girl series that's been going on. Kelly very much enjoys watching TV. Like, for me with TV, and this makes sense with Potterless, like, I'm very picky. Like, I wait until things have a ludicrous number of Emmy nominations before I'm like, <laughs> maybe I'll check it out. All like, right. I was like, this Ted Lasso thing comes good. And it's like, it has 20 Emmy nominations. And I was like, there's 20 Emmys? <laughs> uh, so I was like, maybe I'll watch it. And it's perfect. Everyone should definitely watch it. Apple, pay me money. Um, but 
Kelly will like save up these shows where she's like, do you want to watch this? And I'm like, no, no. It, it hasn't won every award that exists <laughs> yet. So uh, whenever I go out of town for something, she then like marathons through Goes all through of those. It. Got so it. I the believe, mediocre stuff. Yeah. yeah. Like, cause she has a higher tolerance for like putting something on in the background and being like, eh, it's fine. Like she still watches The Bachelor. Like that's oh, where yeah. she is at. Like where I am like, I can only hear the phrase, I'm here, you know, they're not here for the right reasons, like, so many times. <laughs> so, yeah, I think she's probably just, like, marathoning through a bunch of shows that I have deemed not, uh, not worth my time. Yeah. <laughs> ah, Jeremy asks, where did you get your shirt? I love it. It gives me Saved by the Bell vibes. It's a very good compliment uh, for anyone listening at home a, or too far chili away. Chili peppers on there? Yes, it is a very, like, bright blue turquoise shirt with chili peppers on it because I thought I was bringing the spice tonight yeah. by making fun of a video game. Um, but yeah, I got it from Bonobos, which is where I get most of my clothes. I wait until their clothes go on like extra discount because they're like too expensive at first. But yeah, that's where I get most of my stuff. I don't think they make the shirt anymore, so you can't copy me, but that's womp where you womp. can get it. Okay, Bob asks, you dislike Quidditch, I get it, but what fantasy sport should have replaced Quidditch and why? Hmm, uh, do you have an answer for here? Because my answer will become very obvious. Oh, <laughs> fantasy sport. Mm -hmm. You love a sport, don't you? I am so sportsy. <laughs> I would say that game that they play with Rip Van Winkle. Ju jumping over lawn, a candle? Is lawn, uh, lawn bowling? Oh, uh, bocce? That's not fantasy. That's a real sport. Yeah, it is a real sport. Wizard oh. bocce. Oh, because especially like you could go like Alice in Wonderland with it. That's where, croquet, uh, and but, I'm into but, that. Yeah, you could use like you know, I be want rolling it to be Hogwarts. Around. Flamingo croquet. <laughs> that's my answer. I think that's very good. Yeah. My, my go-to answer for this is I always just want like NBA jam, which is like magic basketball yeah. to be the sport where like you can jump really high and if you make three shots in a row, you you become on fire and then you make a bunch yeah. of shots. Yeah. That would be that would be fantastic. That'd be great. Nathan asks, what hotel are you in? I am in undisclosed location. Mm. Uh, I love that. Recommends a the, pizza place to the, me. The, the continental breakfast there is great. <laughs> at the undisclosed. The view at the undisclosed yeah, is great. Yeah. Um, Nathan does ask though, is that a calculator watch? If so, where can I get one? Yes, this is a pretend gold calculator watch. It is stainless steel, uh, but it is painted <laughs> with gold paint. It costs like $50 and you can get it on the internet. Uh, it's made by Casio. If you ever need to do quick math on the fly, but also look cool, it's the watch for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't realize like how expensive fancy watches were until I went to uh, like a fancy watch store with Paul Bay, fellow podcaster, and mm. he's like into watches. Oh, and I was yeah. like, oh, like I have, you know, I nice watches can be like a couple hundred dollars. Like maybe a Rolex is like a thousand or two. And this one guy like opened this watch and he was like, this is $24,000. Yeah. And I was like, that's a car. Yeah. Like, what, why would you, I can't, I couldn't leave I can't the house. fathom wearing something that expensive. No. Like, Oh, uh, like even when I wear these nice shoes, I, I saw they, you take them out of the box. Uh, the, the protective yeah, they were, wrap. They were around a bag. They yep. had like the stuff in them. Like these shoes will step from this carpeted floor to like the green room. And yep. then I will change into other shoes because like spent a lot of money on them. I, yes. I cannot fathom. I will never have a fancy car because like, have you ever seen other people drive before? <laughs> like I'm just, oh, uh, I can't. <laughs> My yeah. goodness. Oh, okay, here's the fun one. Okay, well, this will be for both of us. Um, Megan asks about hair care routines because our hair is great. So what is your hair care routine? <laughs> uh, so I actually have naturally curly hair. I learned but, this backstage. Yeah. Wild. I don't like the way I look with it. So I okay. straighten it, mm -hmm. but it's 115% humidity outside. Mm. So generally I step outside and it's like, <clears throat> I blow dry my hair. Mm -hmm. I put a little wax. A little hairspray. No, very nice. A lot of floofing. Yes, lots of floofing. I sit up, I go upside down. I yep, oh yeah. You gotta go upside down, you gotta yeah. go against the- Defy the gravity a little bit. Mm -hmm. Ooh, very, very- Wrong phantom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say, very, very other wizard yeah. witch of you. Um, so yeah, I, what I will do is I'll like, shower, blow dry it. Um, I put in a little bit. I now, uh, because Function of Beauty sponsors the pot, I have hair serum, which protects my hair Ooh. from blow drying. So I put that in. Yep. I blow dry it like the opposite direction of the way that my swoosh goes. Because if you go against it, it gives more volume. And that's what I like to go for, for vertical hair. Uh, so I blow dry like against the direction I want it to go to give it something to fight against. 
Yeah. I then put in Layrite cement clay. They're also not paying me. Um, rub it in my hands and then put it up and then use this brush here and then just like brush it into the way I want to get it to go. And then inevitably it like flops down and then I just have to, you know, like continue to fix yeah. and deal with it and blah, blah, blah. Like my hair is very stubborn. It's like very thick and it likes to like its natural state is like mushroom. Uh, yeah. If you've ever seen Guile from Street Fighter, like my <laughs> hair, if left unkempt, would just yeah. do that. Full I did rock that for like a little bit in college, which was like not intentionally, but it just kind of like happened because I was in college and I didn't want to pay for a lot of haircuts. Yeah. So when it would grow out too far, I would just go like, <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I have very stubborn hair that doesn't want to do the shape that I have my hair in. So it's a, it's a constant yeah. battle. Yeah, same. Yeah. So. It's awful. It's the, the curse I, we bear as yeah. people that care about With our big hair. hair. Gosh, oh my goodness. Uh, someone asked what are on your socks. They are uh, they are Space Jam socks. They have the Monstars <laughs> on them. Uh, I did recently watch Space Jam, A New Legacy. It's terrible. Yeah. Uh, I I cannot unrecommend it enough. <laughs> like it is it is not it is not good at all. Okay, great. This is this is very good. This is a great question to end on because it's very relevant to all of our interests here. This is from Bridget. Bridget it says this is for both me and Jordan. What is your favorite Taylor Swift album slash song and yeah. why? <laughs> Perfect way to end this. Perfect. Do you want to go first? What is your favorite song slash album? The one that I listen to the most is You Need to Calm Down. Mm. It's a bop. Just, just so you can kind of get in yeah. that, that vibe. I, I have it on a lot of different playlists, mm -hmm. and I really like the vibe of it. Is that the one where Brendan Yuri comes in, or is that a different? No, no. that's the other one. That's the it was me basically he 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 Taylor one. Swift's yeah. like, I'm bi, but I'm not going to say that ah, out loud. It was okay. her like pride bop, and uh -huh. I love it. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I have a favorite album, but I do have a favorite song, which is Trouble, because it is perfect. Yeah. Like, it is absolutely perfect, and Trouble, I believe, I think it came, yeah, it came out when I was in college, and it was just, like, a very good, like, to be in a very sweaty cafeteria, uh, like, dancing along, and just, like, a chorus of people in college all just, like, yelling, ah! at the same time during that part where it's oh, yeah. Like yeah, like the like the paper towel. Yeah, the paper towel thing. The There's goats. a very good YouTube video where if, yeah. you, if it starts to do that and then it's someone putting their hand over the paper towel to snow turn, it goes like, Aah! Yeah. Aah! It's really solid. But yeah, I just, I think Trouble is very good. I, I like hype, like hype up songs and one. I think it's very good. Has Taylor made the the redo of Red where she's saying F you to Scooter Braun and all that? November, November? Yeah. Okay, good. So currently it's Trouble. And then starting in November of 2021, it will be Trouble Taylor's version in parentheses yeah. because absolutely screw all of the people that are trying to screw her over. Yeah. I love that she found the loophole to be like, actually, so smart. I know what I can do like that. However, she came across whether it was her or someone else. Like She's the like, fact that she found my a way, voice, God, I do what I want with it. It's so good. Yeah. So what a, what a perfect note to end the show on. Taylor Swift, thank you so much for for blessing all of us. <laughs> but thanks to all of you so much for coming out to the show. This was such a fun time. So fun. So, thank you all. So 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 much fun. Thank you so much. Um, also, shout out to Mr. Management and Leaky Khan for sponsoring the tour. Shout out to all the folks here. The Woodlands Tavern and all the folks here have been incredibly nice, and that's really cool. Also, want to give a huge shout out to Adam Dell and the Ohio Media School and the Score on Air crew for doing all of the video stuff, which is a wild thing that I've already gone from like podcast to in-person to like in-person and videoed. Whoa! <laughs> like, I think that's very cool. And uh, now people like across the world can like see a live show because like sometimes people live in places where I can't do live shows and stuff. Yeah. So I think that's very cool. Like so I'm, Michigan. Oh, wait, that's next. Because <laughs> <Yeah, no, no. laughs> in Michigan, they don't have the internet. <laughs> uh, so, so I'm very thankful to everyone. But yes, thank you so much for coming out. Under normal circumstances, I would like gladly do like meet and greet stuff. But because like the world is the world right now and I'm trying to be safe and I don't want to like conglomerate people into a line. And also like I would like to be safe and do the other shows that I have on tour. I'm just going to like clean up these dollar bills on stage I'll and help. then go backstage uh, and stuff. So I'll be like hanging out here a little bit at a safe distance as I clean up the mess I made. I normally would do all this stuff, but I can't. But thank you all so much for coming. I really appreciate it. Like this is so cool that I get to do this and I wanted to do this tour and to be able to do it now, like months after the fact is, is great. So I very much appreciate it. You're all wonderful people. I do have to leave. Uh, so I'm going to go. But before I go to round up the night, as they, as they say in the wizarding world of Harry Potter, before they blast their favorite Taylor Swift album on full volume. Yeah! Thank you so much for coming out, everybody. Yay! 
Hey, thanks so much for listening to this live show episode of Potterless. I very much appreciate that you are still listening to stuff that's on the Potterless feed. That makes me very excited. If you are listening to Potterless, it's way after the fact, and you still want access to those Patreon goodies that we made over the years of Potterless's existence, you can still do that. If you go to patreon.com slash Potterless, you will see that it is set up for my new podcast, The Newest Olympian, but there is a tier called I Just Want the Potterless Stuff, and that'll get you access to all the old Potterless stuff from the live streams to the bonus episodes to the director's commentary. So there's still a whole treasure trove of audio, and for just four bucks a month, you can get access to all of it. Also, we still sell merch at potterlesspodcast.com slash merch. There's tickets to the live shows that hopefully will happen if you go to potterlesspodcast.com slash live. You can find us on social media. You can check out the other stuff that I'm doing. Mike Schubert, you can go to my website, schub.es. You can follow me on social media at schub17 on Twitter and Instagram, or you can listen to my other podcasts, Potterless, Horse, Meddling Adults, or Modern Muckraker by searching for those wherever you get your podcasts. But I just appreciate you being here. I appreciate you listening. Hopefully, I can see your faces in the future at live shows or live streams or whatever the future has in store for us. But until then, thank you so much for listening. And as they say in the wizarding world of Harry Potter, wizard on!